Hello everyone. Today we are going to design a rectangular footing. A rectangular column of size 400 mm by 600 mm. The column size is given. B is 400 and D is 600. Transmits a limit state load of 1200 kN. The ultimate load is given as 1200 kN. At an eccentricity of 150 mm, eccentricity is given as 150 about the major axis. Design a suitable isolated footing for the column by limit state concept. Safe bearing capacity of the soil is given as 190 kN per meter square. Use M20 and FE415 steel. FCK is 20 and FI is 415. The same question can be asked in different way. In this question, you can see that the ultimate load is given and then the ultimate moment is given. Using both of them, we can find the eccentricity that is the moment upon the load. So we will get 0 0.15 meter. 0 0.15 meter will be 150 millimeter. The ultimate load of the column PU is given as 1200 kN. Let us assume the self height of the footing as 10% of the total load. In this way, we will get 120 kN. So, the total factored load W will be 1320 kN. The safe bearing capacity of the soil is given. To find the factored safe bearing capacity of the soil with the safe bearing capacity of the soil, we have to multiply 1.5. In this way, we will get 270 kN per meter square. The footing area will be W upon QU. We will get 4.89 meter square. We can round that to 5 meter square. Both of the sides of the column is given in the question. In the short side, we have 400 millimeter. And in the long side, we have 600 millimeter. For rectangular base, the proportion of the two sides is made similar as the column dimensions. We can write this as 0 0.4 meter and this one as 0 0.6 meter. As per this case, we can write that 0 0.4x into 0 0.6x will be 5. After solving for x, we will get 4.56 meter. So the short side of the footing will be 0 0.4 into 4.56 we will get to 1.824 we can round that to 2 the long side of the footing will be 0 0.6 into 4.56 we will get to 2.736 we can round that to 3 so let us provide a rectangular footing of size 2 meter by 3 meter the factored soil pressure q u will be the factored load PU upon the area, we will get 200 kN per meter square, which is less than the factored bearing capacity of the soil. So the footing area is adequate. Now we are going to find the factored bending moments. In the question, the eccentricity is given as 150 mm. Suppose there is no eccentricity. Both of the footing and the column will have the same center. This distance should be 3 minus this dimension of the column which is 600. So it will be 0.6 meter upon 2. So it will be 2.4 upon 2. We will get 1.2 meter. The eccentricity is 0.15 meter about the major axis. About the major axis, we have to move the column by 0 0.15 meter. So the distance between this side of the footing and this side of the column will be 1.2 plus 0.15. We will get 1.35. Here you can see that I have moved the column towards the right by 0 0.15 meter. Now the footing and the column has a different centers. Let us find the bending moment at the short side face of the column. This is the formula. QU we know 200. 
For Lx, we need to apply this distance 1.35. In this way, we will get the moment as 182.25. Now, we need to find the moment at the long side face of the column. We need to find either this or this distance. Both of them are same. This distance should be 2 minus this side of the column which is 400. So, it will be 0 0.4 upon 2. We will get 0 0.8. The bending moment at the long side face of the column will be QU into LY square upon 2. QU is 200 LY. We just calculated 0.8. In this way, we will get 64 kN meter per meter. Now we have to find the effective depth D. We know that for FE 415 steel, this is the formula to find the effective depth. For that, we will get 257 millimeter. 257 millimeter is a very small value. The footing may fail in one way shear or two way shear. So let us increase the effective depth. Randomly, I have kept the effective depth D as 550 millimeter and the overall depth D as 600 millimeter. Now we are going to design the tensile reinforcement in the footing. First, let us do that for the longer direction. From the code book, we can copy this formula. In this one, we can apply all of the values. In the formula for the breadth, we need to keep unit breadth, that is 1 meter. So it will be 1000 millimeter. For the moment MU, we have to apply the moment we have calculated in the short side face of the column. We need to convert this into Newton millimeter. So that we have to multiply with the 10 power 6. Finally, we will get this equation. Using a calculator, we can solve this and find AST. Otherwise, if you can memorize this formula, we can get AST directly. We know that the minimum reinforcement required for when FE 415 bars are used is 0.12% of the total cross-sectional area. We need to apply the unit breadth that is 1000 mm. The overall depth D is 600. In this way, we will get 720. The calculated area is more than that. So we have to proceed with this area. Let us provide 16 mm diameter bars. The number of bars per meter length will be AST upon small AST. We will get 4.73. Let us round that to 5. The spacing per meter length will be 200 millimeter. So let us provide 16 millimeter diameter bars at the spacing of 200 millimeter. Let us find the provided AST that will be 1000 upon the spacing 200 into AST. For the provided AST, we will get 1005.31 millimeter square. Now let us take the short direction. Here the moment is 64 kN meter. Rest of the data is same. For AST, we will get this. Using this formula also, we will get AST directly. For minimum AST, we will get 720. Our calculated AST is less than that. So we have to proceed with this AST. Let us provide 12 mm diameter bars. For the number of bars, we will get 6.36. Let us round that to 7. Spacing per meter length will be 142.85 millimeter. We can round that as 140. So let us provide 12 millimeter diameter bars at the spacing of 140 millimeter. Now we are going to apply the check for one way shear. The critical section for one way shear is located at a distance of D from the face of the column. We already know this distance which is 1.35 meter. So this distance should be 1.35 minus D. We have to find the ultimate shear force. The formula is QU into area. We need to find the shaded area for 1 meter length. That is 1.35 minus D into 1. QU, we already know that is 200. The effective depth D is 550 millimeter. We can convert that into meter. So it will be 0.55 meter. 
we can apply that. For the ultimate shear stress in the longer direction, we will get 160 into 10 power 3 Newton. Using the formula, we can find tau V. For that, we will get 0 0.29. For 100 AST upon BD, we will get 0.183. For AST, we have to apply the provided area. Now we have to take the table number 19. Our 100 AST upon BD is 0.183. It comes between 0.15 and 0.25. Our FCK is 20. So we have to select these two values by using interpolation. We can calculate tau c for 0.183. We will get 0.306. We have to find tau c k. When the overall depth of the slab is 300 or more, we have to select 1. Our overall depth is 600 millimeter. It is more than 300, so we need to select 1. So tau c into 1, we will get 0 0.306. Tau v just before we have calculated. Tau V is less than Tau C K, so it is safe against one way shear. Now we are going to check for a two way shear. Critical section for two way shear is located at a distance of 0.5 D from the face of the column. From the face of the column, we have to take 0.5 D or D upon 2. We need to find this distance. The column dimension is 0.6 meter plus d upon 2 so it will be 0 0.55 by 2 plus d upon 2 so it will be 0 0.55 upon 2 we will get 1.15 meter also we have to find this distance the column dimension is 0 0.4 meter plus d upon 2 plus d upon 2 so plus 0 0.55 upon 2 plus 0 0.55 upon 2 we will get 0 0.95 meter we have to find the shaded area that will be the total area which is 3 into 2 minus this area which is 0 0.95 into 1.15 also we need to find this perimeter that is 0 0.95 plus 0 0.95 plus 1.15 plus 1.15 we will get 4.2 meter the ultimate shear stress will be BU into area for that we will get 981.5 kilo Newton we have to convert that into Newton then using this formula we need to find tau V for that we will get 0 0.42 then we have to find KS that is 0 0.5 plus beta c. Beta c is the ratio of short side to the long side of the column. Short side of the column is 0 0.4 and long side is 0 0.6. For Ks, we will get 1.16 but Ks should not be greater than 1. In this case, we have to keep Ks as 1. Using this formula, we need to find tau c. Our Fck is 20. For tau c we will get 1.11, for tau c ks we will get 1.11 because ks is 1. Tau v is 0 0.42 which is less than tau c ks. So it is safe against two way shear. Here you can see the reinforcement details. Now we are going to end this session. Thank you for watching this video.